can, I always try to make the best use of my filming time. And I'll often film two video subjects at the same location at the same time. Using some of the same footage, but keeping the relevant footage separate for editing later on. Now, that's exactly what I intended doing this week when I went down to Sunk Island. But things didn't work out quite as planned. It's a very flat and exposed area of land on the Humber Estuary. And I think I can honestly say I've never been there either in winter or summer when it's not been blowing a gale. Apparently, even trees have difficulty growing there. And that gate to nowhere is a product of the fact that even hardy hawthorn hedges have trouble surviving the cold, salty, high winds. The hedge that sat at either side of this gate being long since gone. Now, Ashley Watson offered me the opportunity to review his Orkney Baffle. And I'll get onto that in just a moment. And on a bright but cold, windy winter's day, this seemed like the perfect location to test it out. But you should never underestimate the power of cold, high winds. I didn't have someone else available to help me film this, I was on my own, so I was relying on my travel tripod, a piece of equipment that's given me sterling service over the last couple of years. Now I've already lost one camera to these sort of windy conditions and it soon became obvious that using a tripod in these conditions was going to be the equivalent of camera suicide. It did however give me the opportunity to try the Orkney out under the conditions that it's designed for. Now if I'm totally honest, products like this are difficult to get excited about. It's not a jacket, a helmet or a pair of gloves. And I've honestly lost count of the amount of these kind of products that I've owned in the past and I've found that they always fail to live up to the manufacturer's claims. Some are uncomfortable, some won't stay put. And in all cases I found that icy winds cut through them in no time at all. So to be quite honest, I was a little bit skeptical about reviewing this one. Now, first of all, it is an Ashley Watson product. So it is made from the very best materials. In this case, it's knitted merino wool, a material that has for a long time been prized for its comfort and its insulating properties down to the hollow structure of its fibers. Now, Ashley told me that he actually went through 10 prototypes of this product before deciding on the final version. Not just to work out what the best design was, but also to determine the correct type of stitching and the density of the stitching to make sure that it does its job properly. Now I'm not quite sure what the technical terms are for the different parts of this particular garment, but the bib part is a different type of stitching to the actual neck part, and presumably there is a good reason for this. The actual bib part is designed to fit over your shoulders in order to seal up any drafts that might get through to your body from the collar and the fastening of whatever jacket that you're wearing. The neck part itself is extra long, and I wasn't sure exactly how you're supposed to wear this. You could of course roll it over so that it's got a double thickness like a roll neck sweater, or you can just leave it baggy so that the folds themselves will trap warm air from your body and insulate you from the cold. Now in my case, I tend to ride even in winter with an open-faced helmet, and I found that it serves just as well as a neck tube in that you can pull it up over your chin, your mouth and your nose to effectively seal the area between your helmet and your jacket. It has a really soft, luxurious feeling that feels really comfortable against your skin. Merino wool, of course, being the non-itchy type of wool. The fabric itself doesn't feel particularly thick and I thought that this was going to be a problem. But having said that, if it was too thick, you're going to have trouble getting your helmet on or to get it to fit underneath your jacket comfortably. Now, we've all worn baffles of some sort or another in the past, and we're all familiar with the restrictive nature of some of them. Where they make turning of your head under normal traffic situations difficult, or as you turn your head, they come untucked. 
letting in drafts and soon rendering themselves useless. Now I'm glad to say that Ashley's perseverance at the design stage with this particular baffle has paid off because it allows you complete freedom of movement and the carefully worked out bib design means that it cannot come untucked no matter what you do. Now wearing it over the nose and mouth didn't present any problems with actual breathing at all and this set off some alarm bells in my head because it stands to reason that if you can breathe through it then cold winds can blow through it. As I've said having tried so many of these types of garments in the past I was very skeptical. Now in retrospect I should have had a bit more faith in Ashley's design expertise. I felt cold in the house before I even left to go and do this filming session. I put the Orkney baffle on over the Cardington sweatshirt that I'd previously tested and wearing my Triumph New Church jacket I set off for Sunk Island, a 10 mile journey. Now the journey from my home to Sunk Island is almost all open and exposed countryside with high winds blowing in from the North Sea all the way. I soon found it necessary to switch the heated grips on on the T120 as the chill in my hands turned to numbness and as my journey continued I waited for that chill to bite through the Orkney Baffle, leaning the bike at a precarious angle into the side winds as I went along. Now I'm pleased to say that chill never came. The Orkney performed exactly as Ashley intended it to. Not only that, on my arrival I spent two hours filming, battling to keep the camera steady against the winds. Now I didn't remove the Orkney or my helmet while I was filming, it was simply too cold. But with that combination of the Cardington and the Orkney I remained super comfortable throughout the entire session. In fact, on returning home some three hours after setting off, even once I got into the house, I did feel a little bit reluctant to remove the Orkney. Once again, Ashley Watson has proven, with his usual understated but very much evident style, that traditional natural materials and traditional manufacturing methods, despite the additional costs associated with them, are still capable of performing far better than a lot of these space age materials that were constantly getting shoved in our faces. Now us men tend to spend our money on other things and we overlook items like this. But to coin a Yorkshire phrase while I was standing in the freezing cold with the north wind buffeting me, you might want to bring this product to the attention of your missus because by heck this is going on my top 10 Christmas list. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you've found this video useful and that you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I will, of course, leave a link to the Orkney Baffle on Ashley's website. And I will, of course, be back next week. So until then, once again, wrap up warm, ride safely, and I'll see you soon.